Let's take a look at this image I have open inside of the develop module of Lightroom. Just press the D key to get into the develop module and we have the basic panel open. As you can see there are no adjustments that have been applied to this image. You can hit the reset and make sure that no adjustments are actually present in this image. The image was captured during a scene of high subject brightness range, i.e. the sun is setting in the sky, leading to an apparently overexposed sky. We almost have a silhouette of these rocks and beach in the foreground. Now before we reject this file, it's probably worth examining to see what information actually is inside of the highlights and shadows, because it may not be obvious at the moment. If we click, click on the clipping warnings, both the shadows and highlights, we can see we're losing details in sections of the sky and also in the foreground beach. So although the information is very dark, it's not beyond our ability to restore that information. I'm just going to uncheck those clipping warnings. Now instead of starting with a top-down approach, uh, assigning a white balance and then moving forward to exposure and contrast and working our way down, it makes sense with an image like this to start with highlights and shadows. By taking the highlights down, we can see indeed that there is rich detail in that sky to be had. And also if we take the sh shadows out, we can see there's also plenty of information there as well. We probably don't need so much of either, so I'll just back this up. Uh, until we get a nice balance between the two. Now I can actually bring that sky down um, using a, an alternative technique which is to add a, a graduated filter. I'll just come into the graduated filter here and I'll double click the word effect to zero all of those sliders. I can alternatively hold down the alt or option key and that turns that into a reset button which I can then click on. I'm just going to um, take that exposure slider down to one stop and then drag that down over the sky. Holding down the shift key will constrain that to a perfect vertical, i.e. if I'm slightly crooked and then press the shift key, that will straighten it up nicely. Okay, we're darkening the tops of these um, uh, cliffs here, so as well as dropping down the exposure, we can also open up the shadows in that region as well, so we don't have to come and revisit that at a later stage. Okay, now we've applied that graduated filter, I'll just click on the icon once again and come out of that dialog. What I want to do is I want to zoom in on this area. I'll just use the keyboard shortcut uh, Command Plus or Control Plus on, on a um, PC in order to zoom in. And as you can see there, I'll just zoom in again, is we've got quite serious noise and chromatic aberration. It's important that we do uh, inspect the, the file at these close distances so we know what the quality is like. It's, uh, it's unfortunate if we move forward to the printing stage and only notice these uh, at that, uh, that stage. Okay, and so we can make corrections to both of these by coming to the Lens Corrections panel and clicking on the Enable Profile Corrections, which will remove any distortion um, such as barrel dis distortion or pin cushion distortion, and also remove chromatic aberration, which in this instance is what we're looking to do here. Okay, we can also move to the Detail tab, okay, and then uh, we can uh, take a small amount of uh, luminance noise reduction. We'll take this up to 20 and this will suppress the noise. We're not looking to render these uh, tones uh, very flat and plastic by using excessive adjustments. Uh, that will lead to an unsatisfactory print. We're just looking at pulling that down uh, to uh, create uh, uh, or suppress the noise. Okay. The other way we can work if this is a high ISO image and noise is excessive is also to um, reduce um, where the sharpening takes place. I'll just click to zoom out. And uh, we have the default sharpening of 25 present, but this is happening globally. And we can actually mask this to just the edges of the file. We'll hold down the Alt or Option key and then raise the masking slider. This will put the image into threshold view and as we raise the slider we can limit the sharpening to just those white areas we're looking at now or just the edges. Okay, And around about 55 there I'll have 
quite clearly uh, has restricted the sharpening just to the edges and we're so we're just sharpening the detail that actually does physically need sharpening okay now let's go back to the basic panel now I've done the lens corrections and details I can fine-tune the image in this image I might decide to for instance to add a little bit of contrast and also a little bit of clarity it might seem strange to add contrast and clarity to a file that was already um, very high in contrast to start with but this can sometimes uh, create a more realistic or dramatic result and again if we need to open up those shadows a little bit more then I'm just going to raise that uh, to create that nice balance again and maybe push the highlights down a little bit further again as well okay this is the beauty of a non-linear editing approach is it doesn't really matter what order we approach these in because this is a setting sun I will raise the vibrancy of the colors just to give myself a little bit richer color down in the uh, sky and also in the foreground rocks there and the last two sliders that I always work with uh, when finishing off on a file are the whites and the blacks I want to set a white point and a black point for the image now we can use the clipping warnings to try and find those for instance I could click on the highlight clipping and then move the white slider okay holding down the option or alt key to find out where that clipping occurs and then back up okay we can also do the same with the shadows okay I don't actually need to have these selected if I'm going to hold down the option or alt key I can just click on the black slider and then just work out is that too much clipping I think so I want detail there and then just move that back until only the minimal amount of uh, clipping is uh, is available and I'll just finish off with a small exposure adjustment and uh, that is my completed image in this file shot in Death Valley we see we have extremely low contrast due to the dust and the UV light and the telephoto lens being used if we take a look at the histogram we're using less than a quarter of the total width or dynamic range of this file we could move that uh, histogram around simply by moving that exposure slider and center that but that doesn't really resolve the problem of contrast okay if we were to take that contrast slider and push it all the way up to 100 we're starting to use a little bit more of the dynamic range now but we're start, still not going anywhere near setting a white point and a black point for this image and that's really the secret to expanding the tonal range of these extremely flat images is we simply have to take that white slider and push it until we retain a white point and the clipping warning will let us know when we go too far okay as you can see up here we are starting to clip areas of the salt at the uh, on this uh, dry lake bed here and so what we can do is then come back and just make sure that we don't have any clipping in those tones I'll just come back a little bit more okay I'll switch off that clipping warning and now we'll take the black slider and push that all of the way to the left until we see clipping occurring and then again back up until that clipping warning uh, shows no clipping occurring the image file looks a little bit cool so I'll just warm this up a, a couple of hundred degrees I've highlighted it I'm pressing the shift key and the up arrow will take it up 200 degrees Kelvin there we can also increase the drama inside of this image by raising the clarity slider I'm going to push that all the way up to 100 as well and we'll take the vibrance and push that up as well okay and already you can see how an image that was perceiving seemingly very very flat can suddenly uh, take on life and drama uh, by uh, just a few simple adjustments to uh, stretch that histogram out over the full tonal range I'll just need to fine-tune that black slider just a little bit more okay I could also come over to one of my presets I've got an extreme HSL preset here which pushes and separates out some of the colors and now we're really starting to see uh, this image uh, come to life and just so you know where we started from I'll just hit the reset button so you can see the start point for this image and then command Z in order to go back so you can see where we've come from with just a few simple adjustments